Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our snowy lantern project. Aww. We are gonna be doing this project in six steps. Our very first step is we are going to put in our background. Our second step is we are going to do the candle. Our third step is we're gonna paint the lantern. Our fourth step is we're gonna paint in the berries and the pine needles and the foliage. Our fifth step is we are going to add the snow. And our last step is just any finishing details. Sounds great. Now this project is gonna take a little bit longer, but you guys can do it. I know that you can do it. And just think of this as a hangout time with your art friends, Sarah and Michael. Hello. Hello, nice to meet you. <laughs> okay, so we are gonna be using four colors in this project. I have forest green, deep yellow, black, and bleed proof white. And then we're using both of our pigment powders here. I have a red gold pigment powder and a blue silver pigment powder, and I have those ready to go on my palette. I am using four paint brushes, round two, round six, round 12, one inch wash, but please use whatever you have. And just because you don't have exactly what I have, that doesn't mean it won't turn out great. Um, don't let that stop you from making stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. And you aren't going to want a paper towel for this. Okay? Ready? I'm excited, let's do it. Let's do our oath and then let's get into it. So if you can raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. I promise to have fun. Thank you. And I love that oath. And I hope you guys remember it. I love me some oath. I love me some oath. Okay. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the background. So I'm going to wet the entire back area with just water and then I'm going to sprinkle in pigment powder. And I'm going to use my paper towel to block off my lantern when I sprinkle in the pigment powder so it doesn't get everywhere. Okay? All right. So I'm going to work pretty quickly. And we're just going to go for it. It's okay if you overlap into the lantern a bit because we're going to be painting that black. So it's not a big deal. But you want to make sure it's nice and wet. Sometimes if you're a slow painter, the first part is dry by the time you finish painting the last. So sometimes I'll do an extra just swoop. Okay. And then I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to take this. But I want the it's kind of tricky. Just do your best. Oh, well, quickly. Okay. And then I'm gonna scoop up some of this and just tap, 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 tap. And remember, it's not gonna do anything right away. Okay, and then take your round 12, get it wet. And I like to do this because it just helps the color move a bit. Come on, little fella. Come on, little fella. You can actually go in and move it too, dab it. But just know that the blue does come out. You can see it's starting to come out already, but it just takes a second. And that second always makes me feel nervous. Like, did I do it? But by the end of our painting, this will look totally different than how it looks right now. Okay. And then if our paper towel didn't get like covered up too much, this is where you can just really quickly kind of go in and bring that color to the edge. And isn't it cool like what happens when you smear it too? Like you can leave it and sometimes it creates this like whoosh. Or if you take your brush, you can just like create this smear. So do with that as you will. Okay, we're gonna let that dry and we're going to move on to step two. We are going to paint our candle. So I'm going to take a little bit of this gold pigment powder and put it on my palette. And I'm gonna start with a round six. So when I paint this candle, 
I essentially want to go from a dark red to a light red along here on the top. So I'm going to have add water to my pigment powder and that's my red. To make dark red, I'm going to take a tiny bit of black and mix that into there too. Okay. Now, just so you know, the texture of this is going to feel a little bit different because um, there's it's a powdery substance. So if there's a lot of pigment powder in your mixture, it's going to create kind of a grainy paint, but I'm cool with that. It also is going to make your candle metallic, which I'm also kind of cool with, but letting you know. So I'm going to take my round six and I'm going to start kind of in the middle of this candle. Rinse my brush and then use just water to the top. Like so. And if you want to drop in a little extra of this yellow, you can. That's going to give it like an orangey red, like a really warm red candle. And then now I'm going to use the dark red along the bottom here. I always thought it'd be fun to make candles. I, you know what? Yes, I agree. I love like big gnarly looking candles. You know what I mean? Like when yes. they're used and they're drippy and I don't know. I've seen candles lately that have like dried flowers and stuff in them. Oh. They're just really beautiful. And I'm like, okay, that's <laughs> cool. So I'm just kind of working this area a little bit back and forth so that transition is a little bit more smooth. But essentially we're going for a dark to light red on our candle, okay? And then I want to use, I'm gonna to switch to my two because it's a tiny little area. I'm gonna use that dark red for right in here, this little lip within here. Or you know how candle, candles melt in the middle? Yes. That's what we're, we're trying to kind of paint right here. And then we're gonna paint our flame. So I'm gonna take deep yellow and a little bit of this red and mix that together to make an orange. So I'm gonna start off with this orange right here. I'm gonna rinse my brush and then I'm gonna grab just yellow and then add just yellow. And I'm gonna kind of avoid the top of the candle because flames sometimes are so bright that they're white. So I'm just gonna like let that dry for a second and then do a very, very light wash around it. That makes sense. And I think this is dry enough just in case, because I'm gonna paint that edge of the candle. Mm. And I want that to be a lighter value as well. So let's take some of this red pigment powder, a little bit of the yellow. Paint that. So we want it to be very clear that we have the dip in the middle, the edge, and then the front. If your front is the same value as your lip, then you can just add another value layer right on top. Just like that, just to create the three different things. Cool. Cool? Cool. Okay. And look at my background. <laughs> Beautiful. Isn't it awesome? Yes. And you can, again, like this is still a little wet and if there's like areas where you're like I actually want there to be more paint I don't like how white that is this is not it's not too late that you can't move some of it but I want you to try and embrace whatever happens and um, because having areas that are like bright and dark create more interest and it's just good practice for you to let go even if it doesn't turn out exactly how you want the ability to let go is um, something that it's almost like a skill that needs to be built up. So whenever there's a place that you could just be like, I'm cool with not touching this. It will be fine no matter what. This is that place and it's good practice for you to do that. Okay. I feel real good about my candle. Love the little gold sheen that's on it. And let's actually take a damp brush and just kind of move some of this yellow up. Just like that. Just the littlest hint of a flame. Now, I noticed something that I did, which is I really avoided this 
arm of the lantern, this section, but it's black. So I can actually paint into it. Ah, uh, so you're just going to go over it. Because I'm just going to go over it. And that would be better because then for sure, I'm not going to have a white edge in between. Gotcha. Um, okay, good job. Now we're going to paint our lantern itself. Now this is the part that takes a little bit of time. And let me tell you why. Um, because the lantern not only is black, which is going to be tricky because we have to still have like details on it and have values within that black, but there's also a back to it that we see through this glass. So we have to create a, a convincing back to the front of our lantern. So I'm gonna start with the back of my lantern first, and then we'll move to the front of the lantern. The other thing is there's a flame in here. So like the back edge is gonna have like a warmer tint because there's a fire in there. So it's just a little bit more detailed. But you guys can do it. I know you can. I'm not even worried about it. Let's go. Okay. So um, I'm actually going to take this kind of bluish color. And you can even just pull from the background. And I'm going to paint the sections. The windows. The windows. And it's just a barely there color. This is why I can get away with just like stealing from what's around me because it's just like a hint. And if you get a little bit lost in the lines, just look at your reference photo. Okay. Now this back window is tricky because that's where the flame is. So I'm actually going to paint that more of a warm kind of yellow red. So let's grab that same orange that I've already mixed here and just kind of on either side, I'm going to put that in and then I'm going to rinse my brush and use just water to kind of surround it. So I want there to be a value change within this window right here where it's a little bit darker along the edges and then it kind of transitions to a barely there yellow. And then I also kind of want to hint that the light is continuing to, to like, it's not stuck within this window. It continues all around within, right? So there's going to be a little hint of yellow up at the top here. And you can just use water to kind of blend that out. It's just a hint. And remember, it's okay if you get into the black parts because they'll be black. Okay, now this back guy right here is a little bit tricky because first of all, it needs to be gray because we're looking at it through glass farther away from us. So it's not gonna be pure black. And there's a flame right next to it. So it's actually gonna be like a warm gray right next to that flame and then transition to a cool gray. Um, just as like, to help you guys keep track, what's inside and the back of this lantern is gonna be gray. And then what is in front of us, the front side of this lantern is gonna be black or very, very dark gray and black, okay? Okay. So um, let's start with a yellow and let's mix in a little bit of that red pigment powder to just make it nice and warm. I'm gonna paint that edge with it like that. Also what's tricky about this project is like this is a structure <laughs> so your lines need to be straight-ish. <laughs> <laughs> I struggle with that. So if you have crooked lines you're in good company. Okay and then I'm actually going to use this pigment powder with water because if you mix these colors together it actually creates a really nice gray that has a blue tint and also is kind of a metallic and I really like it. So that's the color I am going to use. See how it's, this is it's just this like lovely metallic blue. Um, I might add a tiny, tiny bit of black. Yeah, there we go. So using that, I'm going to paint the inside here. Now, our last step is we're gonna add like snow and frost on the glass. 
So a lot of these like corners and edges we won't see, but it's good to paint them. Okay, this is where we gotta do straight lines. So just like, for me, it's actually easier to do straight lines horizontally than vertically. So if you have a, like a rotating artboard and you're not painted down, taped down to your desk, it, if I had the option, I would turn mine sideways because it's easier for me to do a straight line sideways. And oh. the more you paint, you will find a way that makes it easier for you to do it. It's That might not be true for you. You might be like, no, I actually do really well vertically. I would say I do better vertically. It's funny you say that. Yeah, it's it's just interesting. So like just whatever works for you, you'll learn these tricks. You can also move to a round two. You don't think this is something worth like Holbein taping, do you? Oh gosh, no. I mean, some people might and more power to you, but like little details like this, when they're so fine and you have to like cut the tape. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not I'm not into it. that. Okay. But I also just like, I'm fine with a little bit of wonkiness. So I think it more depends on your personality type, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Okay. So there is one. And then um, we're going to do the other one here. And don't forget underneath here too. So this whole part inside here is this kind of this gray bluish color. And again, it's okay if you cross over the line a little bit. Just try and make sure you can still see the line. And I'm just using my round two because this is such a small area. And then when I get to the yellow part, I'm going to paint into the yellow part a bit. Oh, okay. I was wondering this whole time, how are you going to handle that? Yeah, you kind of like let the gray blend into the yellow. And for me, like looking at this right now, I haven't fully covered the yellow, but I think I might because I want to make it obvious. This is a panel and this is a glass. And right now this yellow is reading like it's on the same. Yeah. So I need to separate them. Perfect. Just like that. Perfect. Perfect. And then if you want to add like, I would Im imagine that this has like a little bit of a lip right here, you know, like a curve of what's holding the candle and stuff like that. A lot of that is going to be covered up, but sometimes it's nice just to kind of like put it in there so your mind remembers that there's more structure and stuff like that, even though it's going to be covered. And even you can add a little shadow underneath here. Okay. Okay. So that is like the back part of our lantern. I do wish, remember when I added the light up here, it kind of turned more orange and I want it to stay yellow. So I'm going to go back in with yellow. Okay. Sometimes these more detailed paintings are just like a lot more, um, finessing, a lot more blending, little details, you know, that kind of stuff. So really what you're looking for here when you're trying to accomplish these is patience. That's it. Okay, so we did the back part. Now we're gonna move on to the front part. So I'm gonna want pure black for this and I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna wanna make sure that all of the areas are dry before I paint with black because black is a very strong color and if it touches anything wet, it will take over. So I really wanna make sure this is nice and dry within my lantern. 
nice and dry. Now we're gonna add the black. Now there's one thing that I want you guys to keep in mind, which is when we finish painting our black lantern, it's not gonna look very impressive. You're gonna be like, cool, a black lantern. What really brings us together is when we add the snow at the end. So I'm just asking you to push through and hold on and do not judge your painting until we're done, okay? I'm gonna take my round six. I have my pile of black here and I'm just going to pretend like I have confidence and paint. <laughs> Which is the key to everything. It is literally the key to everything. Pretend. Pretend. Fake it till you make it. That's right. It works in painting too. I am using water to spread this color. And you might be like, well, that's gonna make a lighter black. Yes, it is. And I'm okay with that actually, because I'm gonna have to go back in and add another layer for like shadows and stuff, just to let this lantern have a bit of form. And so if there's like, if it turns out a bit more gray than black, that's okay. Cause that then leaves me room to add a black shadow. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm using my six. Please use whatever brush you feel comfortable using. There's little star cutouts in here that we're gonna go back and paint in black, like a nice dark black when we're done. So you can avoid those. And they're wonky because it's on a curved thing. Also, whenever you're painting anything like this, it's a good idea to try and follow the shape of the form. So like, I know this has like a lip and stuff like, oh, I went into that. Oh no. That's okay, I'm just gonna make it bigger. So just try and follow the, the angle of the curve, okay? You fixed it. It's all better. You just make it thicker. <laughs> That's my life motto. I just, <laughs> more cheeseburgers and thicken up. That's right. Mine too. <laughs> Although sometimes, you know, when I'm painting and I'm like, oh, I'll just make it bigger. And then like the next thing I know, it's like, huge and I'm like all right well this painting's ruined <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay I don't want you guys to think that especially if you're starting out that to be I don't know a professional or someone who's like really good at painting that means you don't throw anything away or you never mess up it's just I think you get you get more comfortable messing up and also you learn how to like adjust or fix your mistakes so then what originally is a mess up is more like, no, I meant to do that the whole time. It's not a bug. It's a feature. Exactly. So we call it in the programming world. <laughs> you just get less. I mean, we talked about this in a other episode, but I think quote unquote professional. One of the big facets is you don't get as attached to the work. Yeah. In the sense that like, if this gets messed up, you're not going to, it's not going to ruin your day. Yes. You know, you just start a new one. I think not getting too attached to the work is such a good thing to practice because like we can love what we're making and make it. But essentially once we're done creating and we put it out in the world, we that's the end of our control. We cannot anticipate or expect anyone to respond a certain way to our work. Right. And so creating, you have to love your work and then you have to be willing to separate yourself and your value as a creative from your work or else you'll never create again. Cause let me tell you, it is devastating when you put your heart and soul into something and then be like here and people are like, what is this? <laughs> you're That's like, bad. <laughs> That's bad. And like, <laughs> If you don't practice separating yourself, that heartache will be enough to stop you from creating again. And so like, it's such good practice to be like, I made this, I love it, it's so great, I wanna share it with you. And then let it go. Put it out there and let it go. Gift it to someone and don't have any expectations of how they'll react because that's <laughs> a heartbreak <laughs> way to <laughs> And I think, I think actually someone, a llama tagged me in this, but Rick Rubin was doing an interview. Um, about Legendary music producer, Rick Rubin? Yes. Okay. And he has a wonderful book called, can you check this? I think it's called The Creative Way. Um, but basically he was doing an interview and he was saying that like you loving your artwork is a success. That's it. And success is not defined by how other people love it, if other people love it. That's not success it's 
Like once you've created something that you love enough to share it with the world, you have already experienced success as a creative. It's called the creative act. The creative act. Thank you. Very highly reviewed. It is a wonderful, wonderful book. And it's one of those books that like, it took me months to read because it was so insightful. I would read a small section and then be like, I need to think on that for a couple of days. So it's one of those that you can really pick up and put down. Um, I highly recommend it. You guys at home can't hear this because I cut the sound out, but there are just a plethora of trucks outside. The amount of huge trucks that drives through tiny Hamilton, Missouri. Holy cow. It is constant. Do you know what I was thinking about that was pretty funny, honey? What? Is We're married, by the way. That's why I'm calling him honey. <laughs> um, when I was in California and whenever I was on the freeway and drove next to a semi truck, I'd be like, uh, you know how you're always like, turn down the music because you're like, what's happening? And it would freak you out. Now it's just like, doesn't even bother me because it's only semis all around. Yeah. I'm switching to my two to get these straight edges. So usually I fill in the majority with my six and then I switch to my two. And the best thing to do, and I'm even gonna, I'm just gonna do it. Try and do it in one consistent line. That is your best bet for making a straight line. Okay. My forest green is creeping. And I'm not talking because I'm very focused. She's enjoying the sounds of large trucks parked <laughs> right outside. Oh, there's nothing like the sound of large trucks. I will say that while I love the light in my studio, those large trucks kill me because I try and record things and yeah. I love the sound of like the paintbrush scraping on the paper and the water brush like dipping your paintbrush yeah. in the water and swishing it around. Like those are such lovely sounds that I want to try and record. And then all of a sudden it's like. Wah, wah, wah. That was the best truck impersonation I've ever heard. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It's taken me quite a bit. If you don't know at home, I edit these videos that you're watching now, but uh, it's taken me quite a bit to figure out how to remove background noise like that. Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah, but you can't apply that to, you know, Instagram style videos. It takes like a full editing suite. Yeah. Okay. And then this edge is not totally straight. And that's because it has one of those latches. Like this is where the latch is for the door. And I hope now that we're putting in the front of our lantern that you can, there's a clear difference between the front and the back. And yeah. so what's interesting is your brain is reading both of these as black, but the back part is actually blue. Mm, that is interesting. Yeah. You got some favorite holiday movies while we're painting over here? Favorite holiday movies. Just Friends. Just Friends is so funny. That's a good one. I do really like the Grinch. I like My the cartoon. Of... The cartoon Grinch is the best Grinch. No, the Jim Carrey Grinch. Oh, no way. I know. This is why we don't watch the Grinch in our home because <laughs> I'm the Jim Carrey Grinch and he's the cartoon Grinch and we can never agree. So we just don't end up watching that one. <laughs> it's funny. The cartoon Grinch is like eight minutes long or something silly. I know. It's like nothing. <laughs> Um, White Christmas, actually. And like the yeah. claymation vintage ones. Oh, the claymations are so good. You are a classicist about Christmas movies, though. You love the old stuff. Yeah. I, I, I almost just said me, too. <laughs> Can you tell I'm only half listening to this conversation as I'm really into the details of this? Okay. 
that feels a bit wonky. I need to straighten that out. If you're never sure, just like take it, see how it looks like. Yep. It looks like handmade. That's you know? right. That's what this is. Handmade. Dang it. It's just going to keep getting thicker. <laughs> it's getting. It's getting. Messier. Messier. It's getting more crooked. It's okay. I'm just going to like. better maybe it's this edge i keep on doing the inside but i actually think it's the outside it's perfect you got to stop you got to leave it alone nope one more, one more. <laughs> okay i can live with that i can live with that all right good <laughs> You're like, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. That's not too bad. Man, I keep on wanting to mess with that. One more. Don't do it. Okay, yes. Okay, now I'm gonna switch back to my six because I'm not doing the detail lines as much anymore. And I'm gonna work around these berries. Now, if the berries and foliage if those weren't here, then there would be a lot more like straight edges and angles because it would probably be like a tiered thing. Um, but thankfully we, and that is the reason why I put all these berries and hollies and stuff here. Cause I'm like, well, I don't want to have to deal with that. So I'm just going to cover it up. <laughs> okay. Feels pretty good. And now when I get to the top part here, I want to start thinking about like the different lips and planes and shadows. So I'm going to do an extra swoop of black here to show. And just like that, it creates a ridge. Yep. And then um, there's a little bit of a shadow here. And the other really thing that I struggled with is trying to get these to match up on both sides, the little ridges. So like, I don't think they totally do, but that's okay. And we're gonna be covering a lot of this anyway, but just in case we don't, now if like you see some, see some peeking through the snow, you still get a sense of the overall form and shape of the lantern. And you can actually use your round two as well if you're gonna do like the smaller lips. And remember, if you like do these detail lines and you're like, well, over here it looks wonky. This side looks good, but this side looks wonky. Well, guess where snow is going to be? Yep. On the wonky side. <laughs> <laughs> so like, remember that you do have tools to kind of like help you. Hide your imperfections. Exactly. Yeah. And that's exactly what I support and what I do. And I'm not ashamed of it. For men, it's called growing a beard. <laughs> I do wish I could do that because then I can form I could create some structure here Jaw structure. yep it doesn't work as well as you think it does trust me because <laughs> I've been trying for that goal for years <laughs> and it's just you know okay my lantern is looking good I feel good about my lantern and what's happening there I'm going to paint the little stars using pure black I want this to be the darkest black because these are holes And they're not perfect stars because this is on a rounded surface that's also like curving and curving up and around. So the stars are not going to be flat. Five stars. Okay. <laughs> Five stars. Five pointed stars. Now I'm going to do the handle. You can do it. Fake confidence. Pinch the end. A nice... 
thin black line. I'm doing it in four sections. That's the best looking handle I've ever seen. Well, thank you. Are you a professional handle painter? Because you're this, faking it well. Except this is crooked, so let's just... And now I ruined it. I'm going to put snow there. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's from the time when the lantern fell out of the tree. And um, there we it's go. A, actually part of its history. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> that's where you dropped it. And I ruined it. Okay. I'm going to do a little bit of a shadow as long as my black is dry here. I'm going to take a little bit of this blue. Same kind of blue from my background. Maybe mix a little bit of black in there just to desaturate it a little bit. Put it in, rinse your brush, spread out that color. It's okay if your brush texture gets a little bit dry. We're just giving like the hint of a ground. Now, whenever you're adding the shadow of something, it is darkest right where it's coming like right where it meets the object. And then shadows usually tend to lighten as they go away from the object. So that's why we have a stronger shadow right underneath the lantern, maybe underneath these berries. Okay. And we also have blue proof white, which we will add later. Now we are going to paint our foliage. So we have leaves, we have berries, we have pine, and we have a bunch of different colors to work with. We have forest green, which is a wonderful desaturated dark green and one of my favorite greens to paint with. We have yellow to mix in with that green. And we also have that blue silver pigment, which I will mix in with the green as well, um, just to get all of these different variations of green. Because let me tell you, the most important thing when you're painting foliage is variation in your greens. If you use the same value and the same hue of green for the entire thing, it's gonna feel so flat. It just doesn't, there's no um, differences in there to create any sort of visual interest that the viewer's eye is just gonna be like, almost not even see the area. Mm. That makes sense. So, I have green. I'm just gonna start. I like to drop in the green, use water to spread it out, you can use whatever brush you feel comfortable using. I'm using my six. You can drop it. And then I like to drop in color while it's wet. I'm just dropping in some yellow. And really, I drop it in and I move on. I really let the colors um, create the texture for me. And I'm gonna kinda like jump around so then the things don't um, blend into each other. But look at this green. Sometimes I like to use my 12 because I feel like the tip on my 12 is actually narrower than the tip on my six. So I can get a thinner line. Let's grab some of that blue. Drop that in there. Now it's not gonna move the same way as the yellow because it's not a total liquid. It's like a little bit grainy, but that's okay. You can also add black into your green if you want. If you want it to be more of like a brownish green, you can add a tiny bit of that gold red. That's gonna make it brown. But look at the different greens already. Fun, huh? Yeah, super cool. More green. I love the background on this so much. And I also want to say like, this is our fourth project in the box. And you can use this kind of like really blue active background on any of the projects. I know we do it for those snowstorm, but like the snowmen, the rabbit, you can totally do this active background if you want. And the thing is, is sometimes when you drop in like a bright yellow, like especially like that, immediately I go, oh, that's too much yellow. But the paintings that I actually fall in love with the most is when these pops of colors kind of show through. 
So even though your reaction might be like, too bright, too bright, too bright, let it go and just see what it does and then see how it dries and then see how you feel about it. And if you don't like it, then it's too late to do anything about it, but <laughs> it's another practice of letting go. And I just want to show you, this is the difference. This is one leaf with one color. Yeah. It's not bad. It's not bad. I but think it's only not bad because it's against the other leaves, like, do the heavy lifting for it. You yeah. know what I mean? So, but, like, if you're feeling like your paintings are seeming flat when you're doing botanicals or anything like that, because you need to have different values and you need to have different hues. Hues means color. Okay. Now let's do our pine needles. So I'm gonna mix some of my pigment powder in with my green just to create like a really dark blue green. And I'm gonna start by doing the stems, the main stems. And then from there, to make these pine needles feel real, you wanna have different colored greens coming out of the needles. So I did a dark green as my main, and then I'm gonna do just forest green as some of these. And they'll, they're different directions. See how I have some curving up, I have some curving down. That's how wild they feel. That's how they grow, right? They kind of grow totally and fully all around this three-dimensional thing. And then I'm also gonna take some yellow and mix that in with my green so it's a warmer green and add that. And if you have room for another one, like another color, add that also. By having all these different values and colors of green, we're adding to the three-dimensional feeling of this pine. Okay, and then we're just gonna repeat that on all four. And again, this is just one color and one layer. Look at the difference in yeah. feeling of how realistic. Yep. A liner brush, if you have a liner brush, works beautifully for this. I like to start from the main stem and go out as opposed to out to in because when I lift my brush it creates a narrower point so then it has like the slightest change in width um but it's your painting so if you would rather do it the other way do it the other way Okay, we're almost done. And you can go behind or in front of the, what are these? Holly. Holly, thank you. Amount of angles I have to. do to get these right. Okay. 
okay? I'm gonna make sure this is dry and then I'm gonna do my berries. Now my berries are just that same kind of pigment powder with water added to them. I like the multitasking, paint mixing, and um, craft tooling you got going on. <laughs> I like to be efficient. I always want to call it blow drying, but I know I shouldn't. You can call it whatever you want. I like that. That's a good <laughs> attitude. Okay, so I'm going to start by doing this red just along the, bot the bottom half of the berries. Then I'm going to take water and use water to spread out to the top half, leaving a little white spot for the glare. Cool. And I like to do a few at a time. So I'm doing bottom half, bottom half, bottom half. Rinse my brush. Blend, blend. We also have bleed proof white. So if you like forget to leave a glare, you can go back in and just... Basically, even if it's not following the round perfect shape. I want to fill in any white gaps. And then I'm going to take a little bit of black mixed with that red just to really add that shadow on that berry. And if you want to blend, you can. Sometimes I don't blend. Sometimes I'm like, no, you're just swoop. Deal with it, you know? <laughs> Okay. Okay. Berries on the right side are done. And then I will say that this red, when it is mixed with water, leans pink. And if you don't like that, if you just add a little bit of a yellow wash on top, it will turn it back to more red color. Okay. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing again. Swish, swish, swish. I got some black in there. Let's add some yellow on those. And remember, we're filling in any of the gaps, even if it makes the berries a little bit larger than what's outlined. And you might be like, Sarah, you're working very fast. I am working very fast because because it's time to work fast. <laughs> Sometimes it's just what you need to do. All right, I'm going to mix a dark green forest with the black, and I'm going to add little veins as long as they're dry your holly leaves are dry add the veins if they're not dry don't add them yet okay and if you want to like outline some of them you can it's up to you okay you're doing it you're now so we're, close we're ready ready four the thing that's going to bring this all together because this looks nice. Okay. This you're like, this, this is nice. It's fine. All right. When we add the snow on top, that's when you're like, Oh dang, I can't believe I just painted this. I'm like an artist. It's is this gonna... the last step? This is the last step. Holy cow. Yeah. I mean, I already love it. It looks so good. Like this, it, it already looks good, but I really feel like that added element of snow on the bleed proof white really does it so snow way <laughs> thank you okay so i'm going to take my round six and i'm going to take my bleed proof white and if your bleed proof white has dried out on you just take a tiny bit of clean water add that to it and stir it and the water should reactivate your bleed proof white okay so i'm going to think about how snow falls so basically wherever there's like a larger area that's flat that's where the snow is going to kind of gather so right at the top here. And I'm using dashes. And I again, I'm kind of following the shape. And you can have smaller flakes and bigger ones. Remember, we 
like snow changes shape a little bit, right? So like let there be variation to your size of your marks and your angles. You can even like smear them together so it's not just round. There's snow uniformity is what you're saying. <laughs> All right, last one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, I love a good pun. <laughs> this is why we're married. Yep. And think about like the rims. The rims would capture more snow. Already, aren't you like, oh yeah. Yeah, it's good. Snowy. And then I'm going to smear some of this white with like a drier brush. Just kind of smear it. It just like softens and makes the snow feel like more like one piece instead of like a bunch of little ones. Okay. And then along the top. And this is what I mean. Let's cover up that part. <laughs> and it's fixed. And it's fixed. <laughs> So I'm kind of like holding my brush a bunch of different angles just to get a bunch of different sized and shape of these flakes. And remember, you can smear some of them. Okay. Okay. So now on top of the berries. Snow gathering on the ground where it meets the ground, right here in this little corner. Listen, I'm not a big crafter, but this would be fun to sprinkle that like fake, fake snow on. Yeah, flocking. Yeah. And then even on the pine needles. Maybe here on some of the leaves. Holly. Holly. Thank you. I can't. I just keep thinking of Halle Berry because these are <laughs> Holly Berries. Okay, and then I feel like I need to do a little bit more here. Let's actually do this like that. And then I'm gonna flick snow too because it's actively snowing. Wait, what about the what about the bottom lip? Oh yes, thank you. Right here. Yes. There it is. Now I feel better. You're like, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Flick snow and then we're gonna do the frosted glass. Then I think we're good. So I'm gonna take Good, good. Okay. And then sometimes we have to go back in and like just mess up some things because we're like that snow is just looking too uniform. So let me go in and mess that up. Okay, and then for the frosted glass here, I'm gonna take my bleed proof white and in the corners, I'm just gonna put it right here. And then I'm gonna like mostly clean off my brush and just kind of smear that. Cool. So I'm painting right over top of the glass. So again, put it in the corners. Kind of wipe off your brush so it's more dry. And then smear it up. Super cool. <laughs> Isn't that kind of amazing? You're like, oh my gosh, frosted glass. <laughs> and if you want to do it in the top too, you can. It's up to you how frosted you want this to Listen, I'm thinking there's a candle in there. The heat's rising. The tops wouldn't be as frosted. Oh, well, I already put it in. Well, so. it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's an electric candle in there. That's right. Beautiful. Doesn't the snow, I mean, as soon as I added the snow in this project, I literally went like, oh, okay, <laughs> this is really good. <laughs> And it's okay to fall in love with your paintings like that. And then if you want to do a couple little swoops 
of Bleed Proof White on the ground, you can. I will say that if you're planning to show the border here, it really throws off our eye on a painting when there's a very clear white border on half of it and then not on the bottom. See how no color is reaching the bottom of this tape? Uh -huh. So if I were to try and frame this where I wanted the border to be seen, then before I removed the tape, I'm just illustrating. See how that throws off your eye on the actual shape of your painting? Yeah. You need to put color, even if it's the slightest hint of color, before you remove the tape, you need to put color along this bottom. It could be a light blue, a light gray, anything to define that border along the whole thing. Um, if you choose to frame it without seeing the border, then you don't have to do that. So I just want to call attention to that is something that you're going to want to do. All right. And it's done. Our snowy lantern is done. I hope that you had the best time painting this that you can see with just some patience and a little bit of finessing, you can create really amazing paintings that like, that you can feel. I feel like you can look at this and yeah. you can feel the snow and you can see the warmth and you can, you know what I mean? It creates that feeling of like almost cozy cold that winter brings. Um, so have fun with this, play with it. And I just want to take a minute to say thank you. This has been the best time. And I hope that you guys keep on painting no matter what. I'm so grateful and honored that I've been able to be your teacher. And um, I'll see you later. <laughs>